Hey, I thought I'd make an updated video on uh, this uh, tapping kit that I make for drilling the head bolt holes from 10 millimeters to 11 millimeters on a BMW M50. Um, this is a kit that I make. I changed the procedure a little bit since the last time I made a video, so I figured I would just make an updated one since I'm doing a block today. So this is a kit that I make. It comes with this uh, tapping fixture, these two 10 millimeter hold down bolts, two 11 millimeter hold down bolts. Uh, this is just an alignment pin, 10 millimeter tap just to chase the junk out of the old threads, 11 millimeter tap, and then these two reamers. So the way this kit works, um, the original head bolt threads in the block are M10 by 1.5. And uh, if you take an S54 head stud, that is M11 by 1.5. And since they're the same thread pitch, you don't actually have to drill out the threads in the block in order to enlarge them to that size, you just have to basically enlarge the existing threads. So the way we do that, uh, we take this reamer and we drill out the threads, which it doesn't cut out the entire thread. It only cuts out about half the depth of the thread. And then that makes it the right size to thread an M11 tap right down the existing thread holes. So it just basically enlarges the existing threads. So, of course, the reason we're doing this is so we can get a bigger head stud. If I hold these up side by side, the one on the right is an M50 ARP stud, and the one on the left is an S54 ARP stud. Uh, it doesn't sound like, you know, one millimeter would be that much of a difference, but if you actually calculate out the uh, cross-sectional area of these two studs, the uh, 11 millimeter set is actually 25% larger cross-sectional area. So uh, the first thing I do on these is I actually drill out the existing chamfer in the block or the counter bore, I should say. And there's two reasons for that. One, it's so that we can get the 11 millimeter tap to start down in the hole. And the other thing is that uh, whenever you go to larger thread sizes on these uh, M50 and M52 blocks, they tend to crack into the, either from the head bolt hole into the cylinder, or sometimes they crack from the bolt hole into these two water jackets. So the increased clamping force from the bigger studs pulling up on the block basically creates a, a tensile strain at the top of this bolt hole because it's trying to pull this all up out of the block. And uh, what I've found, or what I, what I believe to be the case anyway, is that if you actually sink the threads deeper into the block, so that the threads start farther from the top of the deck surface, that relieves the tensile strain on the top of this bolt hole and it prevents them from cracking. So if you look at a stock bolt hole, this is a stock uncut one here compared to after I've done it. You can see on a stock one, the threads start maybe like five or six millimeters down from the deck surface. And I ream them out so that the threads start about like 11 or 12 millimeters from the deck surface. So let's see, I'm gonna do, I'll do this bolt hole at the front here. So I start out with this larger reamer. I believe this is uh, 11, 30 seconds. And I just put electrical tape on here, marked about 11 millimeters from the, uh, from the end of the reamer. So you just gotta get this started in the hole straight. There I've enlarged the factory counter bore and now I'll actually be drilling out some of the original threads. Now you can see the threads start quite a bit further, further down from the deck surface. But uh, once we ream that, we created a really sharp edge here. We want to relieve that sharp edge because that's a stress riser. So I'll just take this chamfer tool and my drill bit. And give that a really nice, generous chamfer. So the reason I'm walking it around in a circle here I don't, I don't want this chamfer to be, you know, a straight 45 degree because then it still has a sharp angle at the top and bottom. 
I'm twisting it around and that actually creates kind of a radius to soften that edge a little bit. So now I'm ready to grow this out. So I take the capping fixture and there's one hole marked drill, one hole marked tap, and then two hole down holes. So I'll set the hole that says drill on there. I'll take my two hole down bolts. I'll take the alignment pin and thread that down into the, the existing threads about just off the bottom of the hole and now the trick to this is you want to kind of just wiggle this pin with your fingers and let it self-center and then tighten those two bolts because if you have the plate pushing up against the side of the pin it'll be hard to get the pin out and it won't be perfectly centered. But if you wiggle it just right, see how easy that comes out? You can just start it out your Now I'm ready to drill it out. So I'm gonna take this reamer. This is a, a 3 8 hand reamer. And just chuck that in the drill. And I'm gonna put just a little bit of oil on the tip of this reamer just to help it cut easier. And I'm going to go low speed and I'm just going to let the kind of the weight of the drill just push it down and just go real slow down to the bottom of the hole. There, I'm not cutting anything anymore. Alright, I can take the plate off. threads are still in there we just kind of took off the the tips of the of the threads and now I'll take the tapping fixture here and I'll turn around backwards so that the I have the hole mark tap on there and this time I'm not even going to take tighten these hold down bolts I want this to be able to float so that the tap can kind of self align the only purpose of this is to hold the tap straight so that you don't accidentally start the threads crooked or something like that so I'm gonna take my tap dunk it in oil just wrap it down there and uh, I like to kind of spin the tap backwards a little bit and usually you can kind of feel where it engages the, the threads yeah there we go and then I'm just gonna hold the tap fixture flat and I'm not even gonna push down on the tap, I'm just gonna turn it with my hands and just the weight of it will get it to start in there. There we go, I missed it for a second there. And just turn this nice and slow. You wanna let the tap kind of find its own uh, spot in there to make sure that it enters into the old threads. Just turn this nice and slow. And you can see, we, even when we counterboard those holes, we still have a lot of thread engagement. There's plenty enough thread engagement to get full strength on the stud. And there, I'm to the bottom of the hole there. I felt it kind of stop. So I'll back it out. Done with this. Clean off my tap. And now I'm gonna run in, run this down here one more time.
There, I'm done. Okay, that hole is completely done. I'm gonna take out our S54 head plug, threads right in there. There we go. That's the way we want it. Stud should be able to wiggle just a tiny little bit so that it can self-align in the threads when it's torqued. So that hole's done. So then we would just go to the next hole. So if we went to this hole, I'd ream that back out with the 11 30 seconds reamer first and chamfer the top of the hole. And this time I need the drill hole to be on that one, so I have to flip the plate over. And then now since that had that that hole is tapped already, I need an M10 hole down bolt in that hole and an M11 in that hole. And then our alignment pin again and just keep repeating the process. So you just go from one end of the block to the other until they're all done. That's all there is to it. All right.